Next one of the common causes is gastric erosions, commonly caused from NSAIDs, stress, trauma, burns, major surgery, serious illnesses, ICUs, major neurological disorders such as CVA, tumors, trauma, and alcohol abuse. So we'll, those are the erosions. Now, the most important thing after peptic ulcer disease is variceal bleeding, which you're going to see a lot in your medical or gastro rotations or your, or your emergency room rotations or your liver rotations. So why is variceal bleeding important? Esophageal or gastric varices, why are they important? Because they usually don't stop by themselves. You need some sort of endoscopic therapy, not just medical therapy. They carry a, they carry a very high mortality. Endoscopic therapy does work. So early endoscopic therapy plays a big role in these. And not many surgical options for these patients. So endoscopic therapy is the first line of treatment for these patients and surgery can be very risky. So these are the varices that you're talking about coming from the esophagus. When there's high portal pressures in the abdomen due to portal hypertension, the pressure gets transmitted onto the stomach and the esophagus leading to the esophageal varices and the gastric varices all happening from restricted blood flow through the liver and backflow from the liver and the spleen into the portal system, which reflects in the esophagus and the stomach. So this is a good picture of esophageal varices. You see the nice, juicy, engorged blood vessels in the mid to distal esophagus. This is a classic for esophageal varices as, and, as, and as the pressures go up, one of those busts open and then you start having fresh blood vomiting through the patient's mouth. This is the picture of a large gastric varix in the fundus of a patient. You see the black one is a scope and the, the engorged area right underneath it is a blood vessel which is engorged with spurting blood underneath. Uh, this is another picture of varices. You can see either in the uh, gastric uh, cardia portion, gastric varices. Um, any of you guys know this um, image? This is the picture of an endoscopic ultrasound showing images of a gastric ulcer or a, sorry, gastric varix, the engorged blood vessels in the gastric fundus. So this is a gastric varix. The red spot that you see is a punctum of a recently ble bled gastric varix. This can also be the picture of an ectopic varix in the small intestine, in the jejunum or the duodenum or the jejunum where they actively bleed. Uh, more so, it's looking at the folds over there, this looks more like an ectopic varix in the uh, distal, distal duodenum or the jejunum. So how do you manage these patients with varices? First, you give medical management with uh, medications to decrease portal pressures, which is the your uh, octreotide or sandostatin, somatostatin analogs, you give perlipressin. What they do, they cause planktonic vasoconstriction, uh, okay, and systemic vasodilation, leading to decrease in portal pressures. Then, after giving medications along with PPI and these terlipressin and sandostatin octreotide and somatostatin analogs, you start the you start endoscopic. You do endoscopic therapy. Either you inject. Sclerotherapy you do with cyanoac cyanoacrylate glue or the sodium marvate alcohol, or you do endoscopic band ligation from the pictures that I show, showed you. If not successful, you go for mechanically stopping the bleeding with a Sengs taken Blakemore, Blakemore tube. Next would be surgery where they do ligation of the varices, which is seldom done nowadays. And radio finally, and finally radiologically through a TIPS procedure. So this is the varix that I showed you before. Another good showing you one, two, three, and four columns of the varices, two of them being very big. Band ligation is performed usually on a routine basis in any liver clinics. This is um, um, a varix. There are some signs of bleeding in a varix. What we talk about is um, a red whale, W-A-L-E sign, or a white nipple sign. This, this is a white nipple sign that you see on top of the varix which is a sign of recent bleeding and a sign that there is a very high risk of bleeding in these patients. So you need to band this acutely, otherwise you're gonna have a catastrophic bleeding very soon in these patients. If you don't band, this is what's gonna to happen to that patient. The blood opens up, the, the white nipple sign, wherever you see that, it's gonna bust open and you're gonna see active bleeding come back from there. So this is a very good description or a picturization of the variceal band ligation. You can see how we attach the instrument to the tip of our scope and we apply the bands at different areas in the distal esophagus to stop the bleeding. Same picture of the band ligation after we place the bands on the varices. This is a picture of the Sengstake and Blakemore tube where we introduce the Blakemore into the stomach. There's a gastric balloon and the esophageal balloon, which we inflate either with air or with saline to cause a tamponading effect. 
So once we do that, we tie it up to the tip of the nose so that it stays in place. Again, it has the esophageal balloon and the gastric balloon as a component to it. X-ray picture showing a wide out on the right side and at the same time showing that uh, the patient, many of these patients are usually intubated on the ventilator, but then we put, because of the active bleeding for airway protection and uh, the wide out of the lung. And then you see the, the balloon in the stomach that has been inflated. Finally, you also see the portal hypertension, what causes portal hypertension. Probably is a busy slide for many of you guys. It just shows you the endoscopic therapy, what we do. If not better, then we go for the stent placement in the bottom right where you see the TIPS procedure, trans, transjugular intrahepatic portosystemic shunt placement between the portal and the systemic. And next case would be surgery where they put a distal splenorenal shunt to decrease the portal uh, pressures. That would be the surgical therapy that would be performed. Same thing, showing the shunt placement, the tips in the top right, and the splenorenal shunt on the left side. Shunt placement. This is the tips procedure on x-ray that you can see is a very good picture showing communication between the portal system in the bottom and the systemic system on the top. Communicating between Communication between both of them is called the tips procedure. And this is a Doppler study showing the TIPS procedure, stent and the Doppler study. Repetition of the same thing. So this is uh, when we put the varices, we put bands on top of the varices. A few days later, this is what it's going to look like. The Many of you have questions. So what happens to those rubber bands? So the tip of the varix, which we band, it falls off. And the rubber band also falls off, leading an ulcer in that area. The engorged vessel actually uh, gets flattened out. We do serial banding every two weeks so that they can, until they get flattened out. So alternatives to the therapy would be the thrombin or the histoacryl glue or the or the cyanoacryl glue that, that I that I mentioned or the shunt treatment also. Another picture of bleeding varices. This is what it looks like on retroflexion from the stomach. So after the endoscopy, other other uh, tree, uh, uh, other causes for up, uh, for upper gastrointestinal bleeding, malignancy also is a very common cause for bleeding. Es esophageal cancer, gastric cancer, or lymphoma, small intestinal lymphoma, or cancer are some of the other causes and benign causes such as uh, such as leomyoma. Dulafoy lesion is also something you need to remember. It's an aberrant it's an aberrant blood vessel that become that becomes superficial due to whatever cause, and they usually present with massive gastrointestinal bleeding. Angiodysplasia or AV malformation, usually common in the elderly or renal patients or patients with aortic stenosis or CLD patients. osler weber rendo syndrome, also telangiectasias, and all these are common in these patients. Perforation can sometimes present with uh, bleeding. So this is the air under the diaphragm where you see can be from perforations that can present with gastrointestinal bleeding also. A very good picture of a varix. Again, repetition of the same picture of a varix. This is an ulcer with a red spot with uh, uh, signs of recent bleeding, forest grade two ulcer. So that is the upper gastrointestinal bleeding. I'm not sure if we...